Hey y'all, um, this is Kelly from Under a Texas Sky, and um, it has been a hot minute since I have gone live. It's probably been years since I've gone live, um, but with YouTube, I mean not YouTube, but with TikTok probably going away, um, that's where I've been doing all of my stuff. Um, the path. Let me turn this sound off. Hold on. Sorry about that. Um, that's there we go. Clearly, this is going to be a train wreck. Um, I thought I would get back in the swing of going back on YouTube, um, and that's why I'm here. I am on my laptop and not on my phone. Um, so. Um, here we are. It's probably going to be a train wreck, like I said, but I don't think y'all would expect and anything else. Why can't I get this volume down on my stupid phone? Hold on. I got the mean. Oh, there we go. Now, I got the mean man watching in the house. He's watching golf and this too. But I thought I would go ahead. I've got a huge wholesale order. Um, my business has changed. Um, over the past year, I am only doing wholesale orders and I've got a big mug order. I'm doing mugs and towels. That's all I'm doing now. And I'm doing sublimation. And I know that a lot of people are doing sublimation and enjoy doing sublimation. And so I thought that I would go ahead and show y'all I do my sublimation mugs and um, a lot of questions come up on my TikTok um, videos and y'all can find me on TikTok and it's just under a Texas sky. When you go to TikTok and I don't have it linked here. I know, I, I mean, this is very rudimentary. I, this is just getting my feet wet again, going back on YouTube. Um, so there's, I've got my link tree linked um here and um you can you can go like i said to my tiktok it's under a texas sky my facebook my facebook under texas sky is real sketchy because you know i had my boutique and i haven't really done anything since i closed my store and so um it's pretty sketchy and on my tiktok it's just full of tutorials that's what i really love doing just like my youtube here Y'all know I, it's just tutorials because that's what I love to do. I love to teach um, and I love to answer questions. And so um, I just wanted to show you, like I said, I've got a huge order that's going to go out this week. And I thought it's just a good opportunity to show y'all um, how to do uh, some ceramic mugs. Um, if you're going to be doing sublimation, uh, you know how, if you don't know how sublimation works, Sublimation works by taking um, printing on sublimation paper. That's just a special paper that releases the sublimation ink. Sublimation ink is a special ink that is affected by high heat. Um, this paper is a special paper. Like I said, it releases the ink. This is printed with sublimation ink. And when high heat is applied to sublimation ink to a polyester surface, then what happens is the ink turns into a gas and that gas permeates the surface when high heat is applied and it actually becomes a part of whatever it is you're putting it on. In this case, it is a polyester coated mug. You cannot do this on just a regular ceramic mug. Um, it won't last. As soon as you put it in the dishwasher or wash it in hot water, that image is just going to wash away. Um, so you have to have it applied with high heat, which happens. In this case, I'm using um, a mug press and I'm using high heat. Um, my mug press, I heat it to 370 degrees. That's what my mug press reads. Um, my mugs, it says to, um, press them at 400 degrees trial and error. You know, it took me several tries to find that sweet spot that gets the exact temperature I need without the paper sticking to my mug 
And just because your temperature gauge, gauge reads a certain temperature does not necessarily mean that's the temperature it's heating to. Um, that's the thing about um, the heat presses that you use. Same thing can be said on the heat press. If you're pressing onto a garment, just because your heat press reads 400 degrees, that doesn't mean it's heating to 400 degrees. Um, the best thing you can do is get a laser temperature gun and shoot it on your the heat element on your um, heat press and make sure that's what it's heating to. I get people ask me all the time. My um, images are not vibrant like yours. Why is that? And I always tell them to check the temperature of your heat press, um, you know, because it's likely not heating to what you think it's heating to. Now, the questions that I get a lot, and I'm just going to address questions that I get a lot. Um, uh, I get a lot of questions. Hi, Brenda, Knoxville, Tennessee. Oh, we love Tennessee so much. We went to the Smokies um, for vacation this last year and it's the best. Um, we would love to buy a cabin up there and be able to go there whenever we want to, especially in July and August when it's so hot. Um, now, when I am printing uh, for my mugs, I buy mug paper and, because it comes this is nine and a half inches um, wide by four inches tall. And that is the optimum size. It's my, And when you buy it on Amazon, I get most of my supplies from JP Plus. Um, it's Johnson Plastics Plus. They've gone to JP Plus, I think, just because you hear Johnson Plastics and you think, what does that have to do with sublimation or blanks or anything like that? Um, that's where I get all of my supplies. Um, my paper, my printer, everything basically has come from Johnson Plastics Plus. This is a great size for um, mugs. Now, for a, an 11 ounce mug, and that is, there's two sizes of mugs that I, I deal with in my business, 11 ounce and 15 ounce. Um, I sell a ton of 11 ounce mugs. I generally drink out of 15 ounce mugs. I like a taller size mug. Um, it always seems like guys like 11 ounce mugs. The mean man drinks out of 11 ounce mugs, but I like a 15 ounce mug. And you can see that it is, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a couple of inches taller. Um, and I'm gonna, and I'm on my laptop. I'm gonna move the screen down so you can see um, the difference and how, um, when I am working with my mugs, when I'm getting the image onto the mug, let me make sure, let me see which one is smaller. Hold on. And they're only slight, there's only a slight difference in the size of the images but your 11 ounce mug clearly is going to have a smaller image. And so I have to be really careful and see which one is the smaller image. Okay. Definitely this one. So on my 11 ounce mug, I'm going to let you just look and see. And I do my um, images in Canva. What I do, there's a couple of places that I go to download images. In this case, I got this image in, I think it was Creative Fabrica. Creative Fabrica and Design Bundles are two places you can go to get images. If you get a subscription in those locations, then you can get commercial use of the images. You can download them, and you have commercial use of the images, which means you can put them on a garment, you can put them on a mug, you can put them on a towel, whatever you want to do. The only thing is you can't sell the image. I couldn't just print this out and sell it to someone to put on their own mug. I can't sell the image, but I can put the image on a mug. And so that's where I get my images. I download the image, then I go into Canva. And then in Canva, I create... Um, a, a design of my own and I make it nine and a half by four inches. So I'm dealing with this size. And then I go ahead and I put the image on there and then I twice 
and you can see how I, you know, I, and I, and I've done it so many times. I know how far to come in. I know how far to kind of split the difference and then um, how far I want it from top to bottom. And it's just going to vary um, image to image. I try to get more of a vertical image than a horizontal image when I'm doing mugs. Um, it, it just makes it easier to go on the mug. The wider it is, the, the less space you're going to have in the middle. Um, that's just how I like to do it. And then for an 11 ounce mug, make sure you can see what I'm doing here. It works out really well. I can wrap it around and it's going to go handle to handle. This is one instance that it works out really well. And I just make sure that it is flush with the table. And then I've got this nifty tape dispenser. I've got this in my Amazon store. Also in my link tree that I have linked here, I have a link to my Amazon store and you can see here it's flush to the handle. So this, I mean, it's really easy when you're doing an 11 ounce mug. And I don't, I don't tape the bejesus out of this. I just put tape. And the reason I love this is you can see how this tape dispenser does. I mean, it cuts the tape for you and everything. And then at the top, I do the little tape where I've got a, a flag, basically. And this is all the tape that I put on my mugs. Three pieces on one side, three pieces on the other side. And that's it. And I've got this taped up. I'm not putting it in my mug press yet. And when I'm doing my orders, I will tape up all of my mugs at once um, until I have them all done. And then I go to my press and then I press them all. Now, I could technically, and I have done this before, this is, uh, and I, I mean, I could technically take this paper and then decide where I want to start on this side of the handle and then wrap it around and try to get it as even as I can on both sides and then you know try to measure it top to bottom on each side and then try to make sure that my words are straight. Um, that is the biggest issue for me. You want your words to be straight. Um, and that that is just a real issue for me. It drives me kind of nuts to do that. Um, because you have a straight image. And when you curve it around, the tendency is it's, it wants to curve up. J just That's just the nature of the way that a straight image being curved, that's just the nature of how it works. What I do, and you, you don't have to do this. I mean, you can work with it if you want to. I, I don't like doing that. I want to be sure that those words are actually straight. I'm going to turn on my press right now. I mean, my heat press right now to be sure. Sorry about that. I'm going to heat my press up and we're going to press one mug and then we're going to, and then, whoa, sorry. We're going to press one mug and then I'm going to show you some things that can go wrong when you're pressing because the, the, path does not always go easily. And you can see here, I've just cut this in half. Then I take the straight edge and I go to my handle and this way I can be very sure that I have it the correct distance, and I know that you really can't see, but I can see in the light that when I'm holding the mug, 
that it is centered. I don't want it too close to the handle. I want it to be centered when somebody is holding the mug. And so I can see this way and I don't have to worry. If I'm just going to wrap it around, then I've got all kinds of issues going on. I want to be, you know, it might not be exactly where I want it if I'm wrapping it around. So I just want to be sure top to bottom. And I really do try and I can see this is glitching. I don't know why, probably because I'm not plugged in to the um, network. Um, I really want to have my image kind of between the top of the handle and the bottom of the handle as much as possible. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put a piece of tape there. And this way, it does use a little bit of extra tape. That's okay. I, I get my tape through Amazon also. And usually it comes, you know, up six rolls or something like that um, in a set. And this is thermal tape. So be sure you get, you get thermal tape. And then I do the other side and then and this is <laughs> just two empty tape rollers that I have taped together. It's a really fancy tool that I um, came up with because I am just really technical like that. And that is my heat press. Telling me that it's reached its temperature. And again, I take the straight edge of the other side. And I have this raised right here. So it's, if because I want it, you know, to be level so I can be sure that I have it at the right height. So I can see that it is exactly as it should be. And this particular paper has the grid on it, so I can see that I have lined up this grid line with the paper that I taped on the other side. And it is lined up. And then I'll just double check, make sure we are straight. And I just, you know, I like just to make sure that I don't want any of these words going uphill or downhill. I want it to be exactly straight. Because if it's not, then that's just a ruined mug for me. I'm not going to send mug to a customer that's not exactly right. I absolutely refuse to do that. Okay. So you can see how I've got this taped up. Now here's going to be the trick. Let me pull this up. Okay. Now I want y'all to see the studio for one thing is what you're going to see. All right. You see my mug press over here. And I have it set for 15 ounce mugs. Let me turn this light on. I'm going to put it in my press. And I have this set for 175 seconds. And so while that is pressing, this is the graveyard of mugs that have something has gone wrong. And I will show you. Oh, God. 
I've got a bunch of them and there's, I mean, you're going to, they'll be lost when you do this. I mean, it's just, it's just the nature of what happens. Let's see. What, what went wrong with this one? Let's see. Honestly, I don't know what happened with this one. Let's let me look real close. Oh, I, it's going to probably be hard to see, but this S right here is not fully sublimated. It did not get the right heat on that S, and so it's faded. The outside of this S is faded. It did not get the correct heat or pressure. Something happened there. So it's slightly faded. And so that is a flaw. And I could not send that to my customer. And so everything else about this mug looked good. But that pesky S was not correct. So it didn't get to go. Um, and I hate this, but when I did this, um, this was the very first one of these that I pressed. When I printed out the graphic, the graphic, when it printed, cut off where the Y came down, um, it cut off when I printed it. And I did not double check before I put it on the mug. And so the Y and any more did not print out. And so I didn't notice it and I pressed it onto the mug. And so even though it looks beautiful, the graphic looks vibrant and beautiful. Um, yeah, it can't be. Printed. And then one thing that does happen occasionally um, if you don't have your graphic taped down onto your mug well, if it's not tight enough on your mug, then you can have ghosting. Okay. When your mug is done, immediately remove the image, which I have done here. You can see it looks absolutely gorgeous. And then I am going to immediately put it in some lukewarm, or not lukewarm, room temperature water. This is counterintuitive, but I wanna stop the sublimation process so this ink does not run. So I'm gonna temper it a little bit I'm going to put that water in here and it's going to cool the mug down immediately. I want to stop that sublimation process. Now, have I lost mugs before doing that? Yes, mugs. I have lost mugs. They have cracked before. Um, but what any mugs that have broken when I've done that, it's because there's been an internal crack in that mug to start with. And at some point that mug was going to break anyway. And honestly, I would rather the mug break um, on me than on a customer. And so I'm not, I hate that I've lost mugs that way, but it has happened. Um, and I was going to show you ghosting. This can happen when you put your image on your mug, like this image. If I did not have this image nice and tight and I pressed it um, at some point during the press, if this, for whatever reason, if this image moves on the mug while it's being pressed, then you can get, um, I don't know if you can see it, but you can get this ghosting um, where it says cluck right under where it says cluck, it says cluck again, but it's very faint, but you can still see it. So it's faint, but it's there. So there are just things like that that can happen. And so you just have to be careful um, 
with your images. And also, when you print your images, you need to be sure before you put your image on your mug that your image on your paper is dry. That's very, very important. If your image is not dry 100% before you put it on your mug, and you may not even realize it until after you print, but like in this mug, for instance, you can probably barely see it, but right next to where it says fabulous, there's a little ink smear right past where it says fabulous. And so this mug, even though it's beautiful, everything else about this mug is absolutely perfect, but right past that fabulous, it look, there's an ink smear. There's a little bit of, looks like blue ink. And so that ink, this this mug is not 100% perfect. And so I could not box it and ship it to my customer. And so, you know, these are just some things. I mean, if you're doing this at home, if you're making mugs for friends and family, you know, that's, that's fine. Um, if you're making mugs to sell, those are some things you just need to be aware of. Um, if you want to have mugs that are gorgeous and beautifully vibrant, um, buy good quality paper, good quality ink. Um, I use a sawgrass printer, which is, it, it's, it's a great printer. I know a lot of people use Epson, the actual sublimation printers. When I first started, I used an Epson EcoTank. Um, not a sublimation printer. I never put the actual Epson ink in the tank. Um, I bought just sublimation ink off of Amazon. I took the ink bottles that came with the Epson printer and uh, because each tank has its own bottle that fits the lid that, you know, where you, you just turn them up and, they, and it fits the, the well. For the ink and I washed all those bottles out I poured the ink out washed the bottles out I put the sublimation ink that I bought on Amazon into those bottles and I filled those tanks up now it voided the warranty so just know that um, I used that eco tank as a sublimation printer for a couple of years um, it eventually died and, um, and I couldn't take it back to Epson. They would not, it, it voided the warranty because it was not a sublimation printer. But I was serious about sublimation at that point. I loved it. And I wanted a more versatile printer and I wanted a sublimation printer. So I bought um, the Sawgrass printer, which is right here. I love the Sawgrass printer. I do have a YouTube video on the sawgrass printer and it shows you everything it can do it's got the by the bypass tray so i can print from this size in the regular tray um all the way to the bypass tray where i can print not 13 by 19 um bigger images for like if i want to put it on a t-shirt you know like a big image i can do that through the bypass tray i love the sawgrass um sublimation printer this setup um, I think Joss, Johnson Plastics has it. The whole setup with the bypass tray um, is probably $1,700. I've had mine for four years, going on four years probably. I've never had a second problem. I never had a, a moment's problem with it. I've never, knock on wood, I've never had any had to do any maintenance to it. Um, it does self-maintenance. Sometimes I'll be sitting over at my desk. It's across the room and I can hear this ch -ch 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 sound. It's doing its own maintenance while I'm over there. It's a great printer. I have nothing but wonderful things to say about it. At most, I ever have to do is do a little head clean thing. And it's wonderful. Um, it's great. Uh, like I said, um, I do... Um, 
towel. I, I sublimate on towels. I sublimate on mugs. That's my main business. Um, and it it's never let me down. And I do, like right now, I've got 36 mugs sitting here that I have to sublimate on. I have done well over a thousand mugs and probably if I count the towels that I've done, I've probably done more than 1500. Um, yeah, I probably have done that. But anyway, that is just a brief tutorial on how to do mugs. Um, if you've got questions, ask them. Check out my my TikTok. While we still have TikTok, I have a ton of TikTok videos um, on all kinds of sublimation. And I, I have the sublimation hack. Um, I don't do that very often. I don't have a t-shirt business, but I do show you how to do t-shirts. Um, I have lots of videos doing t-shirts. Um, like I said, I don't have a t-shirt business, but I do show you how to sublimate on t-shirts um, and how to do vinyl and things like that too. I show, I've got videos on stickers and all of that too. But um, anyway, but this, yeah, we've done about 30 minutes and I think that's plenty long enough for this. Um, like I said, I'm just trying to get back into the swing of things with uh, YouTube. But um, anyway, you've got questions you can ask, um, ask later. Anytime you leave a comment, I will always answer your questions. But thanks for um, hanging out with me just for a little bit this morning, um, actually now afternoon. But um, yeah, I guess I will catch y'all next time and I'll try to be around YouTube a little bit more than I have been. And uh, I will, I'll talk to you later. Thanks y'all.